Shalom. Welcome to part nine of the Hebrew alphabet, where we are learning the alphabet two letters at a time. Be sure you have a font chart. And this will help you learn. The first letter we're learning today is the Kaf. This is the letter which appears right after the Yud, which we learned much earlier. The number value is 20. You'll see two figures under the number 20 because the Kaf also has a final form, and we'll learn that later. The picture meaning of the Kaf is the palm of the hand. You remember when we learned the Pei, we learned that the Pei had two sounds, one with that dot, which is called a dogish, and one without. And we have the same thing for the Kaf. When we have the dot, the dogish, in the Kaf, it's a hard sound, k, k. But without that dot, it is ch. Everybody's favorite noise to make in Hebrew, ch. It's in your throat. If we compare the shape of the kaf and the pe, we'll see that the outside shape of the two letters is similar. But remember, the pe has that little part of your throat which hangs down, hanging down in it. Today, we're also going to learn the final form of the pe. This letter also comes below the line, but it's got that same little dangle hanging in it. Remember the picture meaning for the pay is mouth. We very, very rarely see the dogish in the final pay. It's almost always pronounced as an F, F sound. So these two letters together make a word, which is cuff, which means the palm of the hand or the sole of the foot. Genesis 8, 9. But the dove found no rest for the sole of her foot, and she returned unto him into the ark, for the waters were on the face of the whole earth. Then he put forth his hand and took her, and pulled her in unto him into the ark. In Genesis 40:11, Pharaoh's cup was in my hand, and I took the grapes and pressed them into Pharaoh's cup, and I gave the cup into Pharaoh's hand, into the palm of his hand. Because of the shape, of the palm of the hand, we're going to see some other associated meanings. In Genesis 32:25, And when he saw that he had not prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh, and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. So we have this idea of the hollow part for the way the palm of the hand can be shaped. And again in Exodus twenty five twenty nine, and thou shalt make the dishes thereof, the spoons thereof, and covers thereof, and bowls thereof, to cover withal, of pure gold shalt thou make them. So you can see that your hands can be like a spoon. You can eat with your hand. There are many cultures where they have no silverware. They just eat with their hand, kind of cupping it. And it's interesting, actually, that these two sounds, k and p, make up this shape, and we have an English word, which is cup. Sometimes we talk about cognates. Cognates are words which will go across languages. They will have the same root idea. For example, in English, we have the numbers one, two, three. In German, we have ein, zwei, drei. In Spanish, uno, dos, tres, in Greek, enna, dio, tria, you can hear the same sounds in each number. In Hebrew, we also have cognates in between the words where similar letters replace each other and the words have similar meanings. And I talk about that a lot in the other Hebrew presentations, not so much the alphabet. Another thing which is called a kaf is the leaf structure of a palm branch. Look, it looks just like the palm of a hand. Leviticus 2340. And ye shall take you on the first day the boughs of goodly trees, branches of palm trees, and the boughs of thick trees, and willows of the brook, and ye shall rejoice before Yehovah your God seven days. So we see this word, if we take the kaf and the pe, we add the he, kipah, this is a branch, it's a related word. 
Isaiah 9, 14, which is 13 in the Hebrew. Therefore, Yehovah will cut off from Israel head and tail, branch and rush in one day. Now, if I say kippah, you probably think of the little hat that Jewish men, Orthodox men wear on their head all the time. You might be more familiar with the Yiddish term, which is actually pronounced yarmulke, but it is spelled as you see it here. But again, it's that little hollow shape. And where is the golden kippah? In Jerusalem, of course. Here we can see the calf next to the pay and next to the pace of feet. So we can compare these letters, how they go together. This word is a verb, kafaf, and it means to be bent over. The person who is bent over has that same kind of hollow shape. In Isaiah 58, 5, is it such a fast that I have chosen, a day for a man to afflict his soul? Is it to bow down his head as a bulrush, and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Wilt thou call this a fast, an acceptable day to Jehovah? And so we come to our memory verse from Psalm 146, verse 8. It's a little long. I'll read it all the way through. Then I'll read it word by word uh, with the translation, and then I'll read it again. Yehovah pokeach ivrim. Yehovah zokef kifufim. Yehovah ohev tzadikim. So, Yehovah, you know, pokeach is a special word that means to open eyes. We don't usually use the regular word for opening. We use this word. Ivrim. This is a consonantal vowel. It means people that are blind. Yehovah opens the eyes of the blind. Yehovah zokef. He raises up kifufim, the ones that are bowed down, the ones that are bent over. Yehovah Ohev loves Sadikim, the righteous. Again, I will read it through slowly. Yehovah Pokeach Ivrim, Yehovah Zokef Kifufim, Yehovah Ohev Sadikim. And you remember the story in Luke 13, uh, verses 11 through 13 where the woman had been bowed down, bowed over for 18 years, and Yeshua came, and he healed her, and he raised her up. So we have 18 out of 27 figures for the alphabet. We're two-thirds of the way there. Until next time, Tasimita Enayim al-Hashamayim. Keep your eye on the sky. Your redemption draweth nigh. Shalom.